What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and once again, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap, especially now, the mystery of flight, the majesty of soaring above everybody else on this planet has uh, probably never been so out of reach. Pandemic, check. Sky-high flight costs, check. Skill needed to actually pilot your own airplane, check. This is ACG, Crash Zero One. I'm upside down and most likely dying. Over. But a couple years ago, who comes out of the woodwork to back a brother up? That's right. Microsoft and Asobo, they announced this a couple years ago, Flight Simulator. Now they've gone away with any numbers or any symbols because as we all know, that just confuses people. Ask anybody who plays Kingdom Hearts after the last time they played Kingdom Hearts 23 and a third ohm symbol over momentum or whatever the hell it's called. So we've got Flight Simulator coming our way and they've been doing this for a while. Seriously, the first game came out in 1982, which was probably just a paper airplane and a cassette tape filled with airplane engine sounds. Asobo just got off a of Plague Tale. These are not exactly two people you'd expect to come together and usher in flight sims with a photorealistic system at play, full flight sim mechanics, and AI modeling based on Google Maps. But here you go. Flight sim comes out in various formats, including Game Pass on the 18th. I'll talk about the pricing in the ratings section. If you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. Graphics are up first. When the settings are dialed in on this game, it is one of the most beautiful titles I've ever seen. If you have the settings on medium to high on most of them, you have the streaming data on sliding in and out of airports, those that are rendered, especially from real data, they're incredible looking and a giant step up even from other flight simulator games that have come out in the last couple of years and have their assorted DLCs and other mods in them. Flying across the hilltop and seeing animals moving or cars actually driving around and just that overall feeling actually really does help it. And while some of that has been done in other games, Flight Sim here puts it all together in one package. Gorgeous weather effects, incredible lighting and spectacular geometry make it a sight to behold when you're playing. While you don't have a ton of planes at the starting and as of yet, more are going to get released. I had over 20 and it depends on which version you get. Some props, some jets and so forth. Now, while the scrutiny of true fans will be something to come out a little bit later, I found the interiors overall excellent and seeing the rain and snow around you as you battle the elements and try to land an airplane that's probably barely heavier than you on an airport strip in the dead of night by instrument only is incredible. It's easily one of the most photorealistic games I've ever seen. Unfortunately, it has some issues. Now, even with the new drivers, the game has some issues with particulate, especially snow. In the snowier areas and in some cockpits, snow actually comes into the cockpit itself, ruining that as the entire front of the plane seemed to have not come with you on the trip. Also, while the game looks great with the internet settings on and streaming in that data, on the somewhat lower settings, even turning off that streaming data to check it out, the generic sections don't look as good. Some places really don't look good. Overall, it's still nice. It's just nowhere near that level when you have that streaming data on, but you got to watch out for your bandwidth caps. And you can pick 5, 10, 20 megabits, up to 40, and then unlimited to get that higher quality. It is really something that you'll probably want to dial in if you can. Also, this is a game where I'm going to talk about performance right now, where you really do need to make sure you make most of your settings prior to the flight, because if you're flying and you make some of these settings, it could end up just messing up the overall graphics or not catching those settings, and you'll have to go back and do it again. This has one of the best weather effect systems I've ever seen in my life. When you are in, it doesn't matter, 747, a Cessna, any prop plane, any kind of plane whatsoever, and you fly into a storm or into a weather pattern, it is so incredible looking that water beating off of the windshield and moving through the discrete different layers and that finesse that they have of the fog into the creep of the actual clouds themselves into just a point to where you're looking out of that window going might as well not even have windows because i can't see shit and speaking of that how does a stormy new york perform when you're trying to lift off for the first time about how you would expect. It is not amazingly optimized. It's not so bad, but you're not getting 4K 60 FPS on pretty much any system right now on the ultra settings with any current gen, as a couple of the settings in particular do seem a bit more in the future proofing section. With my current i7 at 4.7 and a 2080 Ti, I have 32 gigs of memory at 4K, but I had to turn a good deal of those settings to medium, or I could leave it at ultra and use the render scaling in the game and drop it to between 1440p and 4K. At this time, the CPU was about 70 to 80% utilization. And I couldn't really get much higher regardless of what I did and what settings. With those results though, that is still a stunning picture. Once again, there's a caveat there. If you do make those kind of changes, please 
it's probably best to just do that prior to taking off instead of doing it while you're actually flying. They do need to patch that particular thing because dynamic changes, especially when it comes to resolution, seem to almost take two jumps into the actual settings to get them to take. Storage and RAM. It's a must. This matters much more than you may have ever been accustomed to before. Mine was using 14 gigs of RAM at the highest point and streaming and writing to the SSD was really high. I installed it on NVMe and noticed a big jump in FPS and really a smoothing of any of the stutter. The game also has a rolling cache for data you download and the larger that is, the better go into your settings and adjust it. If you have an SSD, Guys, gals, install the game on that. Trust me, it's going to give you some benefits. I also did a detailed breakdown of the graphic settings themselves in another video. It's very long, so I'm not going to break all that down here, but I will show you those. There's a ton of settings without hesitation. I can say that people will have some issues figuring them out, but jump in there and mess around with them. Lastly, while the technology is obviously way ahead of its time, some of the land creation and streaming, I did have some issues with land data not matching up or having cars doing some crazy crap or textures not loading in. I went back and they would load in sometimes and not other times. That's just going to be up to the internet. I really wish there was some way in which it could merge those two areas where it's for sure got data and area where it hasn't. If that's happening in a patch later, I don't know. I haven't been informed of that. I do have the retail patch right now, though. Lastly, AI traffic makes a huge difference in FPS. Turn it off if you want to get FPS back. To give you an example of how much, 13 FPS. So turn that on to real traffic or just turn it off. When it comes to the entire game as a package, it looks stunning. It's optimized about where I expected. I did not expect to get 4K60 with this game, even with current technology. We just know that that's not really what's going to happen with a flight simulator game. Anyone who's played that. If you get it dialed in, even at medium or high level, you're getting an incredible picture and there are enough graphical adjustments you can make that I think there's a lot of fidelity there for people to get the FPS they want, especially when I know a lot of people will just play this sim at 30 FPS. And that brings us to sound, music, and voice. Everything looks good, no cross traffic. Go ahead and taxi into position. The rudder pedals should make steering the plane pretty easy. All right, let's do this. Apply full power and I'll walk you through the takeoff as we go. And we're gonna do sound first. So this isn't about Michael Bay moments. It's about the constant drone of jet engines as that wind up during a heady turn and you listen in for problems as you're ascending to flight altitude. In that case, these are fine. The in-cockpit sounds are excellent and sometimes the groan or bump of a plane hitting turbulence or worse, you performing some activity you're not supposed to is translated very well and weather certainly is with water pattering the top of some cockpit of a smaller plane. Since the game doesn't show wrecks, we don't get to hear explosions or that kind of thing, something I'll get to in a little bit. For me, the sound was fine, but I'll leave that to actual 747 pilots and those with experience to discuss if they're tonally perfect for every jet engine. Speaking of perfection, let's talk about voice. You can choose to use the AI voice within Windows itself uh, for basically text-to-speech, speech-to-text kind of thing, or you can use Azure, which is what I'm using. It's got a mix of recorded and AI-driven sounds for the tutorials and the air traffic. I was just really surprised how good this was, especially when you're blurting out affirmatives for squawk codes one second, and the next second you're being told you're danger close to another radar contact. Especially when you mix it in with all the sound effects of the planes themselves and how loud they are, not bad at all. That brings us to music. So there's not really much going on here other than the main theme, music, and a few other places. So moving on from there. Gameplay. So when jumping in the game, you're faced with a number of options for your 20 plus planes in your stable. Remembering this isn't a story based game. First and probably most important is making sure your choice of controller is outfitted right. I use mouse and keyboard to test this, gamepad, and Thrustmaster joystick. But check their webpage for support if your exact peripheral is supported just in case. 
I got things up and running very easily the way I wanted. Then you can jump into the assists and the difficulty. You have custom, which allows you to mini max everything you want or no assists or some assists and so on. Choosing in the middle, I think is a great way to learn. And then you have the tutorial. Now, Microsoft Flight Sims tutorial is fine. It actually worked, don't get me wrong, but it does have a couple issues. First, it wasn't updating with my game controller buttons, meaning switching to keyboard to hit a button, which you will have to do if you're using the gamepad because there's just not enough buttons on there meant the tutorial would ask me to do something with the mouse and keyboard next that I just couldn't do on the controller or couldn't see whatever button it was I was supposed to hit. Worse, sometimes the game didn't grab the controller. Now, this usually resulted in me having to plug and unplug the controller in. This was an Xbox One controller that works on the Windows PC. This isn't an issue with any other game, so it does seem to be specific to this one. It wasn't that big of a deal, but it's something you should be aware of. Pretty much after that, you do the tutorial. It's going to teach you how to land and take off and fly, read instruments and all of that, answer the radio, and then you're off. Now you can make your own flights right, deciding what airports to land and take off from, or just go for a free flight. When it comes to the flight model itself, it does require some fiddling with various settings to get things like gyro to really feel right. And I'm sure everyone's going to have their own setting and you're going to have professional pilots in here who are saying this setting's right in this setting. But right now I got it dialed in. For me, it felt right. The difference between a small prop plane engine was instantly noticeable versus the almost insane weight and just immovability of a 747, especially when you're just taking off. At any time, you can throw the controls to the AI as well. So if you're stuck or you want to watch how the experts do it, you know what? You can have them do it. I did say experts, actually. That's a lie. Listen, they can get the damn thing into the air and point it the way you want to go for your flight range, but... These guys fly like old people screw. It's just ponderous. We talk off in a 747, then the AI just seemed dead set on seeing how many trees it could scrape off the wings before they climbed, which took miles. While in other airports, especially with an open-ended airport, they were usually fine. It's just in some places, I didn't really like the way they actually handled the aircraft. Landing, they were able to do, though. Now, speaking of getting you there and getting you back, the game also allows for various planes to have problems. You got fires and oil leaks and assorted other issues. Like a sim, you can basically set a timer on these as well. So how many minutes after you take off will these issues go on? Or no timer at all and just have them random. I really like this because it allowed for you to figure out how you were going to land a plane with a couple issues. By the way, only succeeded successfully in landing a plane once that had any issues. Most of them turned into a fiery wreck. And what's weird is I know for a lot of people who don't do flight sims, this sounds particularly antiseptic. And I get it. It's almost clinical when we talk about a game like this because getting into the sky, the feeling of reward is almost unexplainable, especially on the higher settings. And flying into a couple airports I've flown into and out of, it was incredible. So many times you're seeing it with blinders, though. You're trying to do it while not air harding your plane into the ground. So many times you may not notice that tower or building that you recognize in real life. But once you do land and look off, you're like, I know that place. And that is just such a cool feeling. Fighting the very real simulation of crosswinds and ground effects while using just the mouse and keyboard just were not enjoyable for me. This is a game where a gamepad or a joystick or, of course, a whole flight controller is going to be the way you want to go. Now, the real question a lot of people are probably going to ask themselves is, who is Flight Simulator for? And that's a good question, especially if you saw it and you're like, I want to do this, even though I don't know exactly what this is. If you wanted a huge upgrade visually to a prior flight sim with much of the functionality and some new bells and whistles, this is for you. If you want an action-packed flying game, this is not for you because crashes aren't rendered out. It just fades to black. It's not that amazing when you clip a tree or smash into a building and it's like you have done damage and it's just done. However, if you're a fan of Euro Truck Simulator or you want a game where you just turn a podcast on and fly, then I can honestly say the gameplay here has a ton for you to do. Additionally, Everything within the game can actually be looked at and tracked when it comes to the airplanes themselves. You can make in-flight maneuver changes as any flight sim can do, but I'm explaining this to people who are brand new to it. You can do all kinds of stuff with the various different computer systems on board. And again, you can simulate having problems with them. And that's how Flight Simulator begins to get into the fun. And we're going to talk about fun factor. It's building to me 
that this game is all about. Building familiarity with the planes, with the locations you land in, building experience of staying true to a course and stress under pressure with extended periods of not much going on, guys. It's about turning on a podcast, just watching the ETA time shrink as you make sure the radar contact at 5,500 feet isn't gonna cut your little plane into two pieces. But it is not action. It's more about those sedate moments of travel. It is the journey. The destination's cool though, because sometimes that destination looks like a real place that you've landed in. But man, I gotta tell you, when you're flying over the Rockies or you're flying past Mount Shasta or something like that, incredible. There's something about getting these beasts into the air, calling out those radio bits and then verifying that your imaginary passengers are safe. The game also has a number of landing challenges that anyone can do trying to best other people on leaderboards. One thing the game does not have that I wish it did was general tasks. I would love to be able to take a job flying supplies to some country in need and having to do a food drop in a difficult airstrip. You can fake that or make it up on your own, but it's not in the game yet. They said all the cockpits are fully working, but in the 747 with everything maxed, I noticed a couple switches with the word in-op next to them, inoperable. They could have been systems that really made no sense whatsoever to simulate, like something for the crew or, the, you know, somewhere else. But that's something to be aware of. If you are in any way engaged or interested in these kinds of content, if you're interested in that journey, man, I got to tell you, there is a lot of them to be had here. And as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating system with rent being replaced by deep, deep sale on PC titles. Well, this is also a Game Pass title. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you got Game Pass, Hell yeah, it's worth checking out, right? You might as well get it. There's three other versions of this, though, that we'll talk about. You've got your normal, $59.99, your premium, which is $89.99, and your advanced, which is $119. They add extra airports and planes, $10 apiece. So you got your normal, which is about $20, and then you've got your premium, which is another $10, and then your ultimate, which is another $10, including airports. I'm going to say outright this way. Unless you're a big flight sim fan and you know all of this stuff, I would not worry about going out there and buying the ultra or premium versions right away. I would go ahead and just spring for the 59 or do Game Pass. There's no reason to spend a bunch of extra when you're going to be able to get in a store at some point anyway. And they do have a good selection of airplanes and good selection of airports. You're going to have to fiddle a lot with those graphic settings, but I think this is a game that is quite worth it. Something we just do not see very often. Even if we do, it's only for a certain group. Microsoft has done a very very good job capturing a group of people who are going to like this kind of game, but also somehow sort of making the fantasies of people who normally don't like this game something that they may look at and say, you know what? I want to try that. So that's it for me. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. I just want to say thanks to absolutely everybody out there who watches these videos, shares them wherever you can, forums, what have you. Please share these. It absolutely rocks. Thanks to Microsoft for the early code. It's absolutely helpful to get these reviews in. And they had that code early enough for everybody to just spend a good deal of time with it, which is always awesome. You can always follow me on Reddit and Facebook and Twitter, and I would love for you to become a patron. Listen, everything gets demonetized at some point. That's just the way my channel works. It's the way, unfortunately, everything works. If you get a chance, check out Patreon. I would love for you to become a fan and a group member. We have an amazing Discord. Also, if you want some merch, you can check out the Teespring. Peace out. Keep on gaming.